Hello and welcome to the Powerhouse Church of God in Christ. I'm Odell Riley, our senior pastor here with our first lady, the Frida Riley. Hello and welcome to this week's Sunday School Highlights. Hey Amen. This week we're going to continue our series on being called. And we're going to be talking about call from birth coming from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. All right, so get prepared and let's get ready to study. Hello and welcome back to this week's Sunday School Highlights. We trust that you're having a great week or had a great week last week and is off to a great week this week. You know, it's the, uh, we're in the middle of the uh, Christmas season. And uh, so I'm trusting that uh, those of you that uh, are planning to overspend for Christmas, that you're well on your <laughs> way. Uh, those of you that's, uh, that's going to wait to the last minute and overspend, you're well on your way. Oh, I guess you haven't started yet, so you still got time. So just remember, you, uh, because of the uh, environment, it's going to be a little different this year. If you try to wait to the last minute to order, last minute to order gifts, mm -hmm. uh, you may be given post Christmas or maybe some uh, <laughs> pre gift New Year's gift pre certificates. We may be given pre New Year's <laughs> Christmas presents. There you go. There you go. So normally, I am the one who is shopping Christmas Eve. I'm I'm the one. Yeah, well, it's going to be a little more difficult to shop online Christmas Eve and get presents on Christmas Day. No, so. no, no, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> the presents won't be here the next day, probably unless, like I said, they're gift certificates or something. But one of the things that we've talked about really is uh, to buy investments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I guess one of the things that you could do if you have a person's information, you could open up a, an account for them some sort of investment account for them. These would probably be family members, I assume. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because if you have someone's social security number, and birthday, and all that kind of stuff, hmm. Yeah, well, we do recommend that you do consider, rather than um, uh, spending uh, money on things that uh, may have uh, little or lower uh, investment value, to consider investing in some things that will drive greater value. For instance, uh, if you got friends that's got some brokerage account, maybe you can uh, give them the funds somehow or another to yeah. buy this certain specific stock. Versus, uh, or if you if you love them enough, maybe you could uh, maybe get a little gold or something like that. Get something that uh, that will increase in value. Uh, versus buying something that the retailers make a lot of money off of, right. Right. and there's no uh, investment value long term. So do consider that as part of your Christmas shopping. That's for those of you who haven't already purchased your stuff. Yeah. And then there's some other investment opportunities, uh, investing in individuals. Mm -hmm. It could be um, easy read Bibles. Mm -hmm. It could be, uh, you know, like I think that my piano, my piano itself is an investment because statistically you're, you're more likely to have someone to learn to play the piano, a child to learn to play the piano if there's a piano mm -hmm. in the home. And having so many, uh, I say so many, having the kids, you know, running around the house, uh, they stop and they will actually play on the piano. So hopefully. Plays a little loosely, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> play on the piano. Oh, God, not play the piano. <laughs> not play. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully uh, we'll get a pianist out of it. Uh, you also have uh, things, sometimes uh, travel. We don't consider mm -hmm. travel. Whenever we travel, we ought to take these as opportunities to learn. So invest in yourself. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's by way of travel. But figure out things that broaden the individual. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. broaden the individual. Yeah. It's not just about entertainment. And we know that there's a time. There's a time for everything. Sure. There's a time for entertainment. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes people play video games and that sort of thing. And there's nothing wrong with that whenever it's, you know, in the right season. Sometimes people are trying to... Uh, the pastor is seething tea, so you may have just heard that. <laughs> yes, that was alarm. that little alarm you heard. We we had a whole discussion this morning, and why do you call it that instead of say boil or cooking tea? Yeah. So we had a whole discussion all that this morning. Maybe somebody can enlighten us. We don't seat coffee, but okay. No. That's, okay, Not a, that's <laughs> another conversation. People, and and why do people use the term brew? Yeah, instead of. I may start changing things up. I'm going to brew some gravy. Well, you may want to. 
You may want to research that. There may be some logic behind it. <laughs> yeah. You know, back to the Christmas thing. There's, there's, a, there's something I remember we uh, uh, did some uh, work on a few years ago where you had people that uh, it found themselves in a situation where it was uh, the Christmas season and they found themselves running short on financial resources mm -hmm. to be able to um, give to people like they typically would have. And one of the things that uh, people did, they would just write out a little, uh, little certificate to say, hey, look, I would donate, you know, two hours. I would donate an hour. I would donate some of my personal time to mm -hmm. serve you. Mm -hmm. And you have a year to uh, redeem. redeem it. And uh, rather than spending money. What if they just, don't like you within that year? So what? What if they don't like you? Well, it doesn't really matter. It would be like any other certificate. <laughs> it would expire. It would have an expiration date on it. So if, if you, you don't, don't like, like them me, during that period. So I really have something I want you to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, you know, it's got an expiration date. So you can, uh, if you seek God or not, you can come up with some ways that they could serve you given whatever the certificate says mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. that time frame. Mm -hmm. But that'll, that's I, a way I, of... I have used that before. Yeah. I have actually used that before. And it has probably been to do some things that I... They were less, probably least enjoyable for me. I, and, you know, I'm just going to use this for an example because I don't mind cutting grass. So it may have been a certificate to cut grass, you know, to give him a break from cutting grass or whatever it is. Um, so that, that is a good, that's good. Well, the next time you give me one, I'd rather you just give me blanket time and let me decide what I want the time to be used for. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to think of all the things I do not want to do. Let's see. <laughs> and my Thank guess you. is one of those things would end up being on the list. The, yeah, you put up the Christmas lights. Yeah. This. <laughs> you, you get the you get spider webs off the house. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I don't know. So let's retract. Okay. Right. <laughs> no, no. But that's an idea. And there may but be some is, other that things is, that's a good idea. Uh, that people could do if they find themselves kind of running short a lot of a lot of people in this season find themselves with economic challenges. After this is after all this pandemic stuff is over mm -hmm. with, I bet people would love to have a, a certificate to keep children babysitting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a day. Yeah. I'll babysit that children. was one of the things that uh, when we when we researched it, that was one of the things that uh, that people gave, they would find parents with young children mm -hmm. and they would give them a certificate to say, hey, look, I'll babysit for you for, say, me, three, three days or three days or four hours at a time or something. It was something like that. Of course, if per child, you'd probably reduce that. Okay, for you, I'd keep your child. Two hours. 45 yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every other month <laughs> or on the second Tuesday. No. But it's a way to get creative. Also, well, we noticed the day that I do have on uh, my vest here, and that's because I got some constructive criticism from, from some of my fans uh, who uh, uh, I'm calling my fans. His closest they, uh, <laughs> fans. <laughs> they indicated that my uh, green and red last week, the green was more Grinch. Uh, and and so I decided that I, w I went in my closet and I found something that had some red in it uh, so it wouldn't be the Grinch green. Uh, but also just keep in mind that this is sort of a jacket. It's a vest, so you may see it every week until Christmas. Just just, just giving your heads up. And I'll try to help you guys out so you don't see it every every week until Christmas. But I don't have a lot of red in my closet, so i got to work with what I have. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, fans. Thank you for that. Constructive criticism. <laughs> All right. Okay. So this week, uh, we're continuing on the subject of being called. Being called. And we're going to refer specifically, our subject is called before birth. Uh, and it has to do with the uh, birth of Jesus, which I think is appropriate given the season that we're in. Um, so I have a deep theological question for you. Okay. I got probably a shallow theological answer, so go for it. Do you think that we are called because of who we are? See, God knows everything, so, so, right? He knows what you're going to turn out to be. So I don't think so. I think that I think each of us, uh, I think God has a plan. God is not a tactical God. He's a strategic God. So he don't just create things just to be creating things. Everything that he created, when you go back and look in Genesis, he created it for a purpose. He created it with a goal in mind of what he create when he created it. So I think mm -hmm. he's the same way when people are born. He decides whether people are going to be born, when, what family, gender, ethnicity. He decides all of these things before they're born. So I don't think it's by chance. I think our 
efforts as human is to seek that purpose uh, as, as, as we appreciate the fact that he allowed us to live. Okay, so, so does that mean everyone is called? Everyone is called for a purpose, I believe so. Many are called, but few are chosen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now, there's a difference between chosen and, and being call, called. And called. That's yes, right. yes, okay. yes. Yes, the reason I was asking this is because you don't, you don't have the privilege of calling yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't have that privilege. You have the opportunity to accept the calling. Mm -hmm but you don't have the privilege of extending the call yourself. Right, right. And whenever you look at those who are called before birth, you know, why was Jacob called before birth? Mm -hmm. Was it because uh, God, God knows absolutely everything. Time does not define God. He's not right, defined by right. time. So is it that God knows the character of the person? He knows the whole person, mm -hmm. everything of the person way before time. Mm -hmm. And so he can trust to place you in a certain po a spot to call you because he can trust you mm -hmm. because who you are. Yeah, but, but, but he, he mixed up. It's like, if I, uh, it's a bad example, terrible analogy. It's like you cooked a cake the other day. You Wait, determined the ingredients. Not the, ca the cake wasn't terrible. No, no, no. <laughs> no my point is, I, I use you cooking the cake. My, my point is, you put the ingredients right, in the right. cake for the cake to turn out like it turned right. out. God, same way. He, it, it wasn't by chance uh, that, that, say, Jacob, or, or in, this, in this case here, Joseph was who he was. God created him that way. So he knew what, he knew what uh, ingredients was going to be mm -hmm. in this person when he created him. He knew what would be in him, and he mm -hmm. knew what would manifest. And he knew what decisions he was going to make. Mm -hmm. So... He, again, he's not a tactical God. He's a strategic God. He's a from everlasting to everlasting. Mm -hmm. So he knows before, he knows doing, and he knows yeah. after. And that's a, that's a critical point to understand, theological mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. to understand. God is not defined by time. We think of time as being right. linear. Mm -hmm. God is not defined by time. God is. God simply is. He, he uses time for us to define. For us to understand. Or for us to be defined. Mm -hmm. Because before you were born, he, he, he still, he had you in his, in, in, he, had, he had created you before you were born, right? So because he already knew that. So, so time is only for us to be able to deal with the seasons and things of that nature. God mm -hmm. doesn't need that. But in him doing that, uh, uh, we sometimes get that confused as though he's managed mm -hmm. or he's bound mm -hmm. by time and he's not. Mm -hmm. so, Amen. Amen. So I, th I, think, I think that's a healthy place to think from. Say mm -hmm. God, uh, for example, God allowed us to be here in this year of 2020. We could have been born way before then, way after then. He, he chose for us to be here mm -hmm. in this season. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason. You know, you're saying that I'm thinking about how sometimes it feels like I have lived many lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, like I, a cat. <laughs> sort of like a cat. <laughs> sort of like, but I wasn't, I wasn't dropped off a rooftop and all that kind of stuff. It's like sometimes when you look back over your lives, just the, the uh, period that you were in, mm -hmm. you know, the, the stage, the uh, phase of life that you're in, sometimes that seems like a lifetime in itself. You know, as a, a young adult, mm -hmm. uh, young parenting, young parenting versus older parenting, mm -hmm. there's a difference. There's a difference. Uh, whenever you were early in your careers versus later in your right, careers, right. sometimes you reflect back and it seems like a lifetime ago. God knew who we are and who we would be uh, at each stage. He knew exactly what would show up. Mm -hmm. He knew the uh, effects of it. Uh, God knew. You know, that became extremely apparent to me as I was reading this lesson, mm -hmm. uh, when God chose Joseph. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Let's, let's, let's maybe oh, go ahead and dive yes. into this. <laughs> A Bible truth said, the angel announced to Joseph that Mary is bearing Jesus, the Savior of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, we, last week I think we talked about angels and we talked mm -hmm. about yeah. uh, their relevance and uh, how God used them and uh, they were, you know, Messengers. Mm -hmm. the they mess that's yeah. right. they, that was their purpose. Was Ministering to spirits. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, the Jews really were in awe, had uh, respect for angels. Mm -hmm. You know, that was 
that was part of their uh, belief mm -hmm. system. Yeah, the angels um, did bear an important role in their um, and who they were. So when you just think about that discussion we just had, when we talked about God creates for purposes. Mm -hmm. He created, as you said, he created the angels as messengers. That's what they were created. That was mm -hmm. their purpose, mm -hmm. to, to be messengers. Uh, and, then, and then we have to be cognizant of that because sometimes we will uh, try to get cre things that God created to go beyond what he created them to be. Yeah. And do you find this, that uh, the seraphims, and I probably mm -hmm. won't say, this, say that correctly, but a lot of times people mix those up with angels. Mm -hmm. That was on, on, the, um, on the art. Yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people mix those up with the angels and they will uh, kind of use them interchangeably. Mm -hmm. But, you know, those are some things we may want to study. Mm -hmm. Those are things we may want to, um, you know, dig a little deeper into. But whenever you speak of angels, they really are the ministering spirits mm -hmm. uh, that the Lord um, gives instruction to. And, and I've, often, I've often heard and as I've studied, that we also can instruct the angels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's something else we may want yeah. to study. Well, and then there are different types of angels as well. You know, when God um, uh, calls certain angels mm -hmm. to do certain things, right? So some of them are, are, are messengers, and, and they just they just worship. They give mm -hmm. a message, and they, they all they can do is praise. And there's other ones come. Uh, they come when they come when those kinds show up. They show, they show up with devastation. Yeah, think about uh, Lot. Whenever mm -hmm. Lot was there, and the angels approached him to give him a message, mm -hmm. deliver him a message. You know, he got to leave the city. Yeah. And the men wanted to. Whenever the uh, angel entered Lot's home, the men wanted uh, these angels. Think about the angels that came to. Um, Abraham, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to tell him about yeah. the promise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, whenever Sarah laughed and why did your wife laugh, you know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So they knew certain things. Uh, and, and you know, just they're just there for certain things. Mm -hmm. And in this case with Joseph, the angel comes to him in a dream. Mm -hmm. Now that is interesting to yeah. me. Mm -hmm. How can an angel, the messenger, come to you in a dream? I understand in, when it manifests in a you know, physical form where you could see, so you could hear them and this and this, but to come in your dream? Hmm. Now that's something that makes you And it, and it may wonder. be worth researching that too, uh, because when you think about the angel being a messenger itself, right? Mm -hmm. and, he, and he came to him in that form, that, that probably means something mm -hmm. theologically, probably and, worth and researching that. So you know, that makes me think on some other things. Whenever, um, Whenever people say that, um, you know, the, the enemy doesn't know what's going on in your mind mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff, it, it really makes me think about other things. Mm -hmm. Because if an angel can minister to you in your mind, mm -hmm. there's some sort of connection. Right, access. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, it, but let's not go too far down okay. that. We're talking about being called before birth. Amen. And, it, and the beauty of it is you were called before birth. We were called before birth. You know, I think it's so important in this season to remind people of that because in this season there are a lot of people that will be having some uh, uh, challenges with being lonely and not necessarily because they're alone. Uh, they're with family, with yeah. friends, and yeah. they're still lonely. And it's a, it's a time of the year that the enemy really, uh, just like God sends the angel, I believe, I believe the enemy sends angels as well. Yeah. And, uh, and so they're in people's mind trying to convince them that, um, you know, life's not good and mm -hmm. things are bad and things of that nature. So you have to be cognizant that there is an intensity, uh, intensity that of those types of messengers in this season, just like the messengers of good intensifies in this season, mm -hmm. the messengers of mm -hmm. evil intensifies mm -hmm. as well. So when you think about that, for those that may be struggling with who they are and their mm -hmm. purpose and, mm -hmm. you know, why they're here. God has a purpose. It, it, our, our opportunity is to seek that purpose. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, that's a lifetime effort, right? I think about Joseph in the whole mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. Joseph in the whole story. So we're talking about call before birth. Joseph was called.
to be the father, you know, the earthly father of Jesus Mm -hmm. before birth. Joseph was called to be in this very sticky situation before birth, a very embarrassing situation, a very, can you imagine this? It wasn't like he was living in isolation. Right, right. It wasn't like that uh, Mary and Joseph were the only two people living in uh, Nazareth or, or, you know, wherever. Um, But here they are before people, she becomes uh, pregnant, you know, with God's son, becomes pregnant before the two are joined together. Mm -hmm. Now this could be an indictment against him. You know, here you didn't refrain from taking Mary, who was um, engaged to Mm -hmm. you, but it wasn't time for you to have Mary. Could have been an indictment against him, an indictment against her. Whenever you got her, you know, she was pregnant by some other individual. Mm -hmm. It could have been a a very embarrassing situation, even for Jesus, even for Jesus. You know, as as we dive into that and uh, as we go ahead and dive into that. Yeah, yeah. uh, let, let's, let me, let's back up to the aim here. So the aim said, by the end of the lesson, we will analyze the story of the angel's announcement to Joseph of Jesus' birth. Just talked about that a little bit. Rejoice that the birth of Jesus fulfilled God's promise to be with his people and live with greater awareness of God's abiding presence. We just kind of talked about that, those mm-hmm. things around the Bible. But I'm going to just kind of cover those things. Mm-hmm. But as we go back and continue that dialogue you were just talking about, the 18th verse said, when the birth of Jesus was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was his spouse to Joseph before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. So you got four personalities called out here. You got uh, Jesus, you got Mary's mother, you got Joseph, you got the Holy Ghost. So you got four personalities mm-hmm. that, that exist here in verse 18 right, that, right. that's coming together to, to unfold this story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and to everybody has to be in his or her right place for this to come together. Interesting concept. I just recognized this. Is that of those four, two of them existed before this was ever written. Mm -hmm. And two were prepared for this. (laughs) Because God God told early on whenever Adam and Eve sinned, Mm -hmm. God told them early on that he would reconcile them. Mm -hmm. He would reconcile them. And basically, he would send, uh, whenever you start reading Genesis 3, I believe it's 16, basically, um, he was going to send a Savior to the mm-hmm, world to mm-hmm, reconcile them, mm-hmm. uh, man back to God. So God was there, and Jesus is the begotten of God. Right. Jesus is God. Mm-hmm. God was there. Mm-hmm. And through them, all things were created, even man. And uh, knowing and understanding that man had to be redeemed, God had to give of himself. So whenever Adam and Eve sinned and uh, they had the fig, uh, they had the leaf, fig leaves or whatever Mm -hmm. around them, uh, covering them, God actually killed an animal. Mm -hmm. God killed an animal, sacrificed an animal to cover them. Mm -hmm. And as they went through, throughout life, the priestess, whatever, they sacrificed, you know, their fruit and that sort of thing, vegetable. We'll go back to Cain and Abel but they also sacrifice animals. And uh, for the atonement, whenever you get later in the scriptures, the atonement was done by blood, Mm -hmm. by way Mm -hmm. of blood. So whenever you read Hebrews, um, that will give you some understanding of atonement and why the the shedding of the blood. So God said that that wasn't good enough. It's going to require... uh, your redemption is going to require blood, but that blood isn't good enough. It will require animal blood. Isn't it? animal blood mm-hmm. is good enough? It will require God's blood mm-hmm. Himself, mm-hmm. God's blood. God, the incarnate Word of God, took on flesh. That means it had blood. Mm-hmm. It literally had blood, and this blood provided redemption. Amen. This blood. So, as you said, two of them existed before. Before this story, Jesus and the Holy Jesus. Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know when you when you're saying that, it also occurred to me that most of the time people read in Genesis where uh, God uh, sacrificed the animal and and covered for them for the covering. People think of that in terms of clothes, but it really was covering for the sin. Mm-hmm. It, it would mm-hmm. it would it wasn't a physical act. They think well, 
Adam and Eve ran around naked. That's what people that's see deep. it. That's deep. And they see it and they, they run around naked. And then God, well, after that happened, he put clothes on them. He did put clothes on them. But it really wasn't about the physical aspect of what had happened. It was about the spiritual thing. So, so get that. Mm -hmm. God made the first sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let me, let me play with your minds just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let me play with your minds just a little bit. Since God is not defined by time, mm -hmm. whenever God decided to create the heavens and the earth, he had already sacrificed of himself. Mm -hmm. He knew he'd have to give of himself because he knew man would sin. That's right. He knew we would fall from grace, and he knew that sacrifice had to be made. Mm -hmm. So God sacrificed of himself before time That's and right. sacrificing of himself. Mm -hmm. Wasn't an accident. Okay, so it, some, mm -hmm. somebody may have to stop. We're going to let them stop right there so they can think, think about that just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to stop and let you get a... Get you, let you get a break in, then we're going to come back with the next scriptures, okay? okay. verse said, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Now this goes back, let's take a little dive into Joseph. You know, we talked about that, how people, God uh, is choosing people before birth. Mm -hmm. He knew the DNA makeup of Joseph. In fact, he, long before Joseph, Joseph was ever thought about way back when in his genealogy, he put the ingredients, if you allow mm -hmm. me to use that mm -hmm. phrase, so that at this time you would yield a person uh, with, the, with, the, with the personality and the conviction and the religious integrity of a Joseph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's, pretty, that's pretty powerful because you, you think of the people, when you're very, you think of the lineage. So we stopped at, we stopped as Joseph as being the father of Jesus. So go back to- Last week. Yeah, go back mm -hmm. to last week. Mm -hmm. Get this here. Yep. I did not bring my. You see it there? You can read it for us because it's I'm sorry. What am I looking for? We're looking at Matthew. Here we go. Sixteen Jacob. The seventeenth. What? Ah. <coughs> uh, the sixteenth verse. Sixteen and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus who is called Christ. Okay, so Matthew, Matthew being Jewish, mm -hmm. gave the lineage of Jesus through the father's lineage. Right, right. Through the father's mm -hmm. lineage, Joseph. Mm -hmm. So although Joseph was not the biological father of Jesus, Joseph was the earthly father, mm -hmm. and Matthew respected that and gave the lineage of Joseph mm -hmm. to Jesus. Yep, powerful. And, and then, this, whenever you look at the 17th verse, so I'm looking at the New International Version. Uh, Thus there were 14 generations in all, Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile of Babylon, and 14 from the exile of Babylon to the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Whenever you get to that 17th, I mean, the, I'm sorry, that 18th verse, this pivots 
So you've given the genealogy in this period. Then you give the very specific story of the birth of Jesus. Right, right, right. Okay, now, it begins with now. Mm -hmm. Now the birth of Jesus. Began on this one. Yes, mm -hmm. so if you're reading uh, like the CEV version mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, you see these almost paragraphs, you see these uh, chunks of, of verses. Well, when you get to this now, that means is you really need to go back and mm -hmm. check out the other things because it's saying, look, I'm setting up for you to right. understand yeah. this in particular. Yeah, for you to for you to for you to have a greater appreciation for the now, you have to have some understanding of how you got here. All right. It's the story right. before the story. That's why I said it's the story <laughs> before the story, right? Yes. It's yes. the story before the story. Now it's the story. If you just read the story and mm -hmm. don't know the story before the story, you miss part of it. Mm -hmm. It's kinda like mm -hmm. us, like as individuals. I mean, you, you see me now. You see me now. Mm -hmm. But what, what you don't see is the story that got me here. Exactly. Exactly. But, but the story that got me here is as much of who I am as what mm -hmm. you see now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, if we could go back and change things, we say, oh, man, I could go back and change that. Mm -hmm. But those things are what made us who we are right, today. Right. They, they yeah. make us, because of errors and mistakes and, and things of that nature, they make us, uh, they create a heightened sensitivity to things that if you hadn't made those mistakes mm -hmm. you wouldn't even consider it right and you know that that is as christians mm -hmm. as christians uh, there are things that we go through as christians that should uh, make us more sensitive and 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 uh, create avenues for us to extend grace to mm -hmm. extend mercy mm -hmm. um, unlike the world unlike the world sometimes in the world what you want to do is ignore that the, these situations ever existed, mm -hmm. ignore the mistake, put it off on somebody else, or, you know. But as saints, as Christians, we ought to be able to look at what God has done for us. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to go to the cross, not, not the physical cross. Right. We don't have to go to the cross. Uh, we do have to take up our cross, mm -hmm. but we don't have to go to the cross. But we as Christians ought to be able to look at ourselves see what God has done for us, and be able to extend grace and mercy to the next person. And I think one of the uh, uh, great tragedies of Christians is to always, for people to try to be in a position of judge in this season when their past didn't line up with their actions. Mm -hmm. So I criticize you today for taking actions that I took in the past, but I'm not sensitive to your right, your, right. your experience. Your, you got to go through your process just like I right. went through mine. And a lot of times, uh, and for some reason, I don't know why this come in my spirit here, it's, it's like abortions. Mm -hmm. it's, it's some of the greatest advocates of people are saying, uh, talking about abortions, or people that's had abortions. Mm -hmm. You know, even though they had it, and they, they dealing with the grief of it, but they're not ministering to people from the standpoint of, I made the mistake. Mm -hmm. They dealing with it from the perspective that it's wrong. Well, all unrighteousness is sin right. and right. wrong. So rather than being sympathetic to say, I know your struggle, I know your plight, I know where you are, and here's the decision I made, and here are my regrets as mm -hmm. a product of that, they'd rather be on the judgmental side and just criticize. And so as it's, it's, it's Christians, we wow. take these weird positions uh, when the Bible tells us all have sinned, I'm not saying all, everybody's created. Short, glory that's right, glory. everybody's that's had an abortion or uh, been involved in an abortion, but everybody has, has sinned and fallen right. short. Right. So let us be sympathetic of other people as they sin and as they fall short. That is, uh, that's, that's interesting. I guess I haven't thought of it in that fashion, but you would think that uh, a person who has gone through some things would uh, actually say, hey, this, these are the, um, these are some of the consequences mm -hmm. that it, that comes along with this. So um, there's a better way. Right. There's a better. So I guess I hadn't thought about that, but that's that's an interesting perspective. And I I guess I assumed that people who were advocates against you're speaking of those who are advocates mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. abortion. Mm -hmm. I guess I was thinking that maybe they were coming from the spot of. You really don't need to do this. I guess I didn't see it that way as being judgmental. And, and now I use abortion as an example, mm -hmm. 
But I'm just talking about seeing. That was just right, an example right, because right. it's such an emotional right, discussion, right? right? Because, but seeing right. in general, it's like oh, racism. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna racism. criticize you for it when I've been guilty of, like, you know, I'm guilty of seeing whether it's that sin or something. Well, let's yeah. let's flip this to racism because mm -hmm. that that's mm. help me, Jesus, help. Okay. So I look at racism. I think about uh, how we have experienced so much injustice in the past mm -hmm. and in the present, mm -hmm. and unless something changes, we, it will continue. Mm -hmm. The future, you can see how things are been set up, how the narrative's been set up, because uh, whites will be the minority before too many generations. Mm -hmm. Whites will be the minority, but if they get you and have us as, uh, us in a different mindset, we'll continue to extend them into higher position. So, racism, we need to just nip it in the bud, period. But the narrative is changing. Yeah. Well, but what we have to be mindful of, I have to be mindful of, is you know, not to have certain thoughts about people, certain uh, prejudgmental thoughts about people, prejudice, uh, because they are white. And yeah. they do something and assume that they did it for this reason. It's very tempting. It's very tempting. So just as I condemn others for being prejudiced, mm -hmm. this is back to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I have to be mindful that I'm not prejudiced as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and it, it's interesting because as we deal with issues in society, whether it be abortion, racism, pick one, they, they we we make these huge issues, uh, emotional, intellectually, socially, psychologically, we make them big issues. But, but God left simple instructions to deal with all of these. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he, he left simple instructions to manage that. Now, we, we, we can come up with a whole bunch of other things, how we pick one and forget the other one and, 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 and things of that nature. But he left it pretty simple for us to manage it. We, we have made it complicated, mm -hmm. but it's relatively simple. Mm -hmm. Love your neighbor. It doesn't matter who your neighbor is, the nationality. It doesn't matter if the sin they've committed. You love them as you love right. yourself. Now there are some things, even in loving, loving one another, and we're 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 still on being called because it it takes a special anointing to get through some things. Right. It takes a special anointing. So even loving one another or mm, showing love to one another, you still have boundaries. Mm -hmm. So there are some things that. Um, have warranted boundaries. If there's a, if there's a, uh, a pedophile. Yeah, and I guess I, I agree with that. The, the the spirit by which I was making my comment that yeah, is yeah, that yeah. if I'm if I was guilty, what grace would I want? I, I yes, extend that to the yes, neighbors. Yes, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Even in love, I don't want anybody to be confused. Right. Even in love, you can love me. You guys can love me. But if I keep stepping on your foot, you're probably gonna, you probably need to move your foot. <laughs> Don't let me step on your foot. You know, it set some sort of healthy boundaries. If every time I step on your foot, you you just about to backslide. You know, you 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 know you, and I'm stepping on your foot is not producing good things. You may need to move your foot. Here comes the freedom. Mm -hmm. If I am a an abusive person. And you and I are in an abusive relationship. We are not in an abusive relationship. But if we were, then you need to set some boundaries. So all I'm saying is that uh, even when you love a person, there is a healthy way to manage some things. And some of us are called. Even God knew we would be in a certain relationship. But God called us because we have what it takes takes to get that thing right. right right and to show somebody else you can do this the right way you don't have to do this in an unhealthy way you can do this in the right way you have what it takes yeah and and i'll extend that to my example loving your neighbor as yourself mm -hmm. there are precautions that you should take even if it's you so and i think that's that's the point you're making it's, it's yes. not i'm not doing it uh because you if, if, if I were a pedophile, mm -hmm. there are certain action needs that should be taken, taken to protect the children, even if it's me. Yeah, right. So right. I'm not doing that because it's you. I'm doing that because 
I love my neighbor as myself. And I hope nobody ever takes this video and chops it up and splices it and represents <laughs> it. Because we look we're like not a couple of, we, could, we look like a couple of villains as we do this. <laughs> but what the gospel is is to all of us. That's right. And one of the things that you learn whenever you present the gospel, if you always say you, 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 people are less apt to receive you, you, you. If you say it's me. for us. Mm -hmm. It's for all of us. Yeah, yeah. But we are called. What we don't want you to miss is that we are called, although this story is has these characters in it, as uh, the pastor named here in this verse, uh, Mary, Joseph, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Although those characters are there, it's for us today. Right, right, right. Okay. And, and so in that space, God knew the DNA of Joseph makeup. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I mentioned this, uh, uh, a lot of marriages and relationships are under attack right now, and the enemy is having a field day on them. And, and the, the challenge with the relationships uh, uh, some of the challenges is unforgiveness. Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, and everybody gets in their corner. The husband gets in his corner with his issues with his wife, and the wife gets in her corner with the issues with the husband. Mm -hmm. So they get in their corners, and because of their unforgiveness, and maybe some whatever other issues they're dealing with, they can't seem to let it go. Mm -hmm. God knew Joseph would be, because if you think about this, we're talking about people that's married, husband and wife, and, consummated marriage has been living together and then they got all these issues mm -hmm. here Joseph is confronted with a situation which is far greater than any of those experiences these people are dealing with right because the, there's such a culture overtone mm -hmm. in this whole story here that this is the way people live mm -hmm. they would catch that young girl about 13 when she's very young but most of the time these arranged marriages were made when kids were very young right, right. Uh, they're, they're made and, and they're committed to the relationship not because of you love her and she loves you because that is part of the culture. Mm -hmm. and, and statistically, arranged marriage is about 95% successful. Love marriage is about 50%. So a lot of these mm -hmm. relationship issues mm -hmm. we're talking about, are these I'm in love, probably with falling in love and getting married, you can fall out of love. <laughs> and so, and then when something happens and you fall out of love, but God knew the DNA makeup of Joseph. Right, right. Th this was a huge thing. As big as it is for that husband and wife in today's society to be having their issues, this would have been a much bigger deal and all of that. And what's so amazing, uh, Matthew does not focus on Joseph a lot. Mm -hmm. Neither do the other books right. focus on Joseph a lot. A lot. They focus on Mary mm -hmm. and, of course, Jesus, because this is what it's about, the Messiah. Uh, but Joseph had to be some kind of guy, some kind of stand-up guy, yeah. but they don't focus on him a lot because... Uh, they wrote intentional with intentions. This one is an intentional act to make sure the focus was on uh, Jesus, mm -hmm. to make sure the focus was on the Virgin um, Mary, you know, that sort of thing, not about Joseph, the earthly father. And, and the lesson in this is those that's having the marital problems can go steady because God created the environment. Mm -hmm. For the son to be born, mm -hmm. he he could have had Joseph be the biological, but he but he but he chose that he was going to be the father through the Holy Ghost. He decided that. You know when you, you just said that, so whenever this was prophesied in Isaiah, and this is in part part of the lesson, whenever this was prophesied, uh, and Isaiah spoke it, people some people say some scholars say that this already came to pass. Isaiah was speaking of his own mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. wife that he took mm -hmm. and the version that he had and the birth of a child. Mm -hmm. So you said that mm -hmm. God could have done this another mm -hmm. way. God could have. Right. God could have, but mm -hmm. God meant what he said. That's exactly right. <laughs> Sometimes we get confused, but God means exactly what he says. So lesson for those people that's having marital problems, even though that this was written, focusing on Jesus, it's worth doing some, a character study on Joseph, maybe in his lineage, to give you some insight to say, here's where I should be operating from. Yeah, God said, okay, I need a little Rahab, I need a little Ruth, <laughs> I need, I need, a, I need a, a lot of these people in here, a lot of these people who are, are, are grateful, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be where they are. I need a lot of these people who are mindful of who I am, who can worship me and identify. Rahab knew 
God before knew she knew God. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. she she had a respect, a reverence for God. So I need some, uh, like you say, a certain combination mm -hmm. of DNA to produce what it is that I need to come for. And when you read this story, even in this verse here, you see uh, that that even though uh, Joseph's character shows up in verse 19, mm -hmm. because he had already decided, because he could easily, and if, and if it was in 2020, in love marriages, it'd have been neon signs and she'd have been stoned. Oh, and, she would have been on, a, um, what's that, Marvy Port, 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 what is that? At least they've been on Jerry Springer, probably, <laughs> yes. something like that. <laughs> or, or, or cheaters. Yeah, cheaters, <laughs> so they'd have done all that, but see, it shows that it doesn't even show that he even considered. Wait, 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 wait. Catfish. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It didn't even show that he even considered Consider. it. He said that when he was faced with the situation, he started considering a way to minimize exposure, yes. not to himself, yes. to minimize exposure to her. Mm -hmm. So he, he had the heart oh to my care gosh. for Mary, even in the midst now of that. Now look at that man. Mm -hmm. Look at that man. Can we go on now? To keep, the <laughs> <laughs> to keep that woman safe. Yeah, he did. Look at that. A woman that at this point, probably not even going to be his, she's already technically, according mm -hmm. to culture, his wife, mm -hmm. but rather than exposing her, he's going to cover her. Mm. And I would imagine she could, she could understand if he did, mm -hmm. if, you know, mm -hmm. if he did put her out, if he did, because, you know, she herself was like, how could this be? It's not in Matthews, but you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I remember that from the Christmas play. How could this be? I mean, with the man. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you read that, I believe that's in Luke. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, you have here that, that he could have done it. He could have done it, and I'm sure she would have understood why. The 20 verses, but while he thought on these mm -hmm. things, Joseph is still pondering. He's mm -hmm. not pondering. The Bible doesn't express to him considering the, uh, the, the alternative, mm -hmm. but said while he thought on these things, while, while he's he trying to figure out a way to manage this, behold, mm -hmm. the angel or the messenger of the Lord appeared to him, uh, appeared unto him in a dream, mm -hmm. and speaking to him, saying, Joseph. Wait. While he thought mm -hmm, on these things. So he's thinking, mm -hmm. but the angel comes to him in a dream. Mm -hmm. So so this is on his mind. That's right. This mm -hmm. is on his mm -hmm. mind. Even sometimes we have things on our mind whenever we go to a bed. We have to be very careful at what we let into our subconscious, mm -hmm. what we have surrounding us, what whatever. While he's thinking, mm -hmm. the angel of the Lord comes to him. And he says, Joseph, he identifies him. Mm -hmm. Joseph, back mm -hmm. to your Jewish heritage, mm -hmm. right? Joseph, thy son of David. In, in, just in that piece right there, he created a linkage mm -hmm. back to God made a promise to David mm -hmm. that, your, that your descendant will always reign. Mm -hmm. and, and so he goes, in, in, and being a Jewish person and a religious person, Joseph would have made that connection. Mm -hmm. Thy exactly. son of David. You're not addressing me as Joseph, the right now as the man. And remember, this is Matthew mm -hmm. writing to the Jews. So this is Matthew telling people how Joseph was connected mm -hmm. to the King of mm -hmm. David. This is Matthew making a very explicit claim that Joseph is connected, the lineage mm -hmm. of Joseph to David. Yep. And, and I would think about this even. Can you imagine the Jewish boys, the Jewish boys of the lineage of Judah, mm -hmm. they were um, descendants of Joseph, mm -hmm thinking that they could possibly one day, you know, dreaming, imagining, they could have possibly been the, the king who sat on the throne. So this is probably a very real, um, how can I say? Anticipation. A, right, exactly. <laughs> but you real. got the flip side too, of all those girls thinking that I could be the one. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Go so ahead. the angel says, fear not, to take unto Mary thy wife, mm -hmm. for thou which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So the first thing he did, listen, he dealt with what Joseph was pondering. He, je he dealt with what Joseph, the thoughts that was on his mind. He says, don't be afraid to take her to be a wife. Wait, listen. Wait, 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 No, 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 no. The first thing is what? He says, fear. No, 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 no. Go back. Joseph, thy son of David. That's the first thing he dealt with. Okay. Know who you are. Right. The lineage. <laughs> know thought, who you yeah, are. I mentioned the lineage, but check this out. He said, got the lineage first. Mm -hmm. And the second thing he says, he says, 
fear not to take unto Mary thy wife. Look, look, that connects back to he thought on these things. See, we, if, you, if I just casually read that, it's like Joseph is considering what to do about Mary to put away. But it looks, but when oh, you gotcha. connect that back, Joseph is saying, <laughs> how can I make this work? Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So what's on Joseph's mind, casually reading, is putting her away. Mm -hmm. But what's on his mind, how to make it his wife. Okay. <laughs> so when you look at that colon, mm -hmm. that colon, for, because. Mm -hmm. Right, right, that's right. For, because. I gave you, I gave you what you're pondering. I gave you the answer. Mm -hmm. Nothing mm -hmm. to support it. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Because this is God's doing. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely the Spirit of the Lord wow. doing. But he connected when he said, thou son of David. Mm -hmm. He connected that uh, commitment, that covenant, Sit on that the God. Throne that's forever. right. He connect, connect that to it and said, this is the manifestation. The virgin, mm -hmm. so you have the lineage, mm -hmm. you have the pro prophetic word, mm -hmm. the virgin birth, and his, and his, um, how can I say, it? his seal, the Holy Spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have it, you have it there for Joseph to um, have the confidence to do what he needs to mm -hmm. do. Sometimes we need to, we need to have faith, we need to have courage. Um, confidence to do what it is we mm -hmm. need to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 now. And she shall. What, look, now you go from uh, dealing with the present. Mm -hmm. First of all, he dealt with the past. Joseph, thy son of David. Mm -hmm. He deals with the presence. Mm -hmm. Mary, uh, did you, did Mary's going to conceive. Your wife. Your, okay. Mary's going to be your wife. Mm -hmm. And then he deals with the future. All right. And she shall bring forth, that's, she that's prophetic, she shall bring forth a son. Listen, and naming a child in the Jewish culture was a major thing. Yes. And so, look, he, so from a decision standpoint, Joseph's decisions are made for his conversation. Mm. She shall bring forth from, you're going to accept that. You're going you to accept her as your wife. Don't mm -hmm. fear doing that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and do that, mm -hmm. uh, because which which she conceived is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his Jesus. people from their sins. Yes, sins. Yes, yes. Powerful, powerful. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. But look at that twenty second. You got another to name? Be, no, I'm just <laughs> thinking about just to be able to use that name, Jesus. It's mm -hmm. just so powerful to save you from your sin. Now, this is not just the name because there right. are other people named Jesus or Jesus or, you know, and this is Yahshua. It actually back to Joshua. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have people who are named that, but the whole essence of Jesus, who Jesus is, the whole walking upright mm -hmm. Jesus, the whole uh, doing everything that God said to do, living in obedience Jesus, the Jesus who sacrificed himself totally sacrifice himself that God's will is done. That Jesus. So whenever we call on Jesus, mm -hmm. that is calling on everything of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's oh, right. Yeah. You get it all. Yes. That, yeah. But that's just what happened here, though. Mm -hmm. when, 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 when Joseph was informed of this, that's why he brought that whole past lineage and power and experience yeah. and prophecy and uh, covenant. All that came with this. Mm -hmm. He said, get back 20 seconds, says, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was sp spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then in this um, prophetic word, let's see, we usually go back to Isaiah. Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, a lot of times when we're looking for... Um, we're looking for cross-reference between New Testament and Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You will see Christ typically used in the New Testament. You'll see Messiah used in uh, 
the Old Testament or, you know, one who is coming and that mm -hmm. sort of thing, the concepts. Um, and it's just, it's just a, a translation. It's just, it was different times. You had in the Old Testament, as they were a nation, they were a people amongst themselves. You had Hebrew and Aramaic is what mm -hmm. it was written in. But the New Testament, most of them did not speak. Uh, most of them spoke Greek, let me put it that way, spoke Greek. And the writing and everything was written in Greek. So you would see Messiah reference. But it was from, um, from Isaiah, Isaiah, this prophecy. Behold a virgin birth, the 30, 23rd birth, behold a virgin, shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is interpreted, God is with us. You, you spoke on that Sunday. Mm -hmm. Let me break that down. Um, the, the lesson, the commentary breaks this down very powerfully, I think. It talks about the name Emmanuel's. The, the name Emmanuel mm -hmm. explains the nature of the child who is to be born. Emmanuel is a combination of M I M in Hebrew, which means with, uh, and a suffix okay. meaning us, new, and the word El, which means God. So if you read Hebrew, you read Hebrew <laughs> from from right to left, yes. not left to right. Yes. So if you if you so if you if you look at it going uh, left to right, you see uh, it means with us God. Hmm. But we say that, that so if you read it from a Hebrew standpoint, with us God, we say God with us because we we read left to right, right, Hebrew right to left. Right. Now now think about that. God with us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, God with me mm -hmm. versus God with us mm -hmm. kind of, I don't know, to me that just kind of brings us all into this kingdom together. Mm -hmm. King, dom domain. domain, domain, or domain. Right, mm -hmm. right, together. Mm -hmm. God with us, just think about whenever we have uh, the relationships, the connections that we have with one another. If we have God with us, He should. We should consider him in everything we That's do. That's right, because he's, he's, he's part of everything. Every, yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Here with uh, Mary and Joseph, mm -hmm. you have to consider what's the will of God. Whenever he's there and he's very present, what is the will of God? That's right. Whenever um, you're at, uh, you're having a business deal with someone mm -hmm. or whatever, if you consider God with us, now sometimes, Business deal, it may look like the devil is, is, <laughs> is very present, but uh, whenever you really consider God with us, what is God's will and absolutely everything that we're doing? Because he doesn't change. He doesn't. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. He doesn't change because it's a business deal he doesn't. versus a, a, a community event versus mm -hmm. a religious event. He doesn't. Now, sometimes people look like they, um, well, not everybody, but you know, sometimes people look like they, separate these things and, and they can behave one way here and behave. And we know that there's certain behaviors that uh, if you're at a ball game, you're going to scream and ah, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, but if you're sitting at home and uh, you're at the dinner table or, or whatever, you know, you don't want anybody scream, mm -hmm. <laughs> screaming out. Ah! <laughs> you know? So there are certain behaviors that are appropriate for certain times. Mm -hmm. But the whole essence of God is relevant at all times. Amen. Amen. All times. Let's take a break here, then we'll come back and we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up. All right.
Okay, welcome back. Welcome. So, uh, the, the Bible 24 verse said, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. Mm -hmm. Now, that's interesting because, uh, look at that. Joseph had the experience mm -hmm. with the angel speaking to him. And then he, when he got up, he took, which means that he, all of the anticipation of putting her away was gone. It didn't mean, it sounded like he went and did this immediately, but what it says is he just moved forward. Right. They had a period. Mm -hmm. They had like a, a, typically I believe it was a year, where they had to basically prove that they could take care of uh, this person they were spouse to, mm -hmm. this person they were to marry, make sure that they could um, actually conduct themselves properly in marriage. Mm -hmm. And so he proceeded and went uh, through the period of time that he was supposed to, having her there. And, and think about her, you know, she's, she's beginning to uh, grow and mm -hmm. show and that sort of thing, but he, he remained focused. You know, that 25th verse is interesting too. Mm -hmm. He says, and he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn, firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Mm -hmm. Joseph honored. See, she, if she, she could have been a virgin when she got pregnant and not a virgin when she gave birth. Right. But she had to be a virgin when she gave birth. And that 25th verse clears that up. Right, right. That she, a virgin shall uh, give birth. Right. So you have him, him uh, there with her. Mm -hmm. And this knew him not. That is the biblical sense of knowing, mm -hmm. being joined together to know uh, one another's husband and wife. Um, and it's like you said, he respected that mm -hmm. enough. That, that, that gives you, again, it gives you insight into Joseph's uh, character, his religious mm -hmm. commitment, mm -hmm. his spirit of obedience and spirit. He had to be very strong religiously because he had to have insight from a Jewish standpoint and he had to have insight from a religious standpoint, Jewish standpoint, from a heritage standpoint, but uh, from a scripture standpoint to know that it was prophesied and not that, that being confirmed <laughs> rather than being the first time right. he heard it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And you know what's so interesting here is that John, remember John was already conceived mm -hmm. by Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. So you have, uh, and, and, more, and um, Matthew isn't focusing on this right, right now. Right. Mm -hmm. He's focusing on Jesus. Right. Jesus is the primary mm -hmm. focus. He's always the main character in the story. Always the main character mm -hmm. in the story. Always. Yep. All right. So we have a couple of questions. Okay. What spiritual heritage did you inherit from your family? Spiritual heritage. Spiritual. Mm. For me, I would probably say praying. Mm -hmm. We pray a lot. We don't just pray a lot. We have church a lot. <laughs> we don't just have church a lot. Now, I don't mean like going to church. I mean just in your house having church. <laughs> church a lot. And I was fortunate enough that I saw this on both sides of my family. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, you know, I have an aunt. She, she's still living today. She's 87 years old. When she gets on the family prayer line with us and just hearing her, sometimes she sings, but sometimes just hearing her moan or whatever, it's just like, oh my gosh. You know, I don't think too much about myself praying, but when mm -hmm. I hear her praying, it's like, oh my gosh, you take me to the water. But, <laughs> but I'd have to say that, and that is something that I think we've passed down to our children. You know, we we, we we have church in the car or whatever. You know, it doesn't matter to us. If we feel like uh, whenever they were small, especially, we, I knew we drove you nuts. You'd be driving us to, you know, to Monroe or whatever. And we're in the van and we're just clapping and we're just singing. And he's trying to drive and <laughs> half the time take calls. <laughs> we're just doing this. So I would have to say it's probably that. And I would say for me, it was it was obviously different. Uh, uh, raised by a single father, um, and I would say that it wasn't so much as the uh, church aspect of it. It was that personal devotion. Uh, what I saw, I, I, I remember this always 
remember my father before he got up in the morning, he'd get on his knees, he'd pray before he went to bed, he would pray. Mm -hmm. It was it wasn't so much a public thing mm -hmm. as it was private, as the almost personal thing. And just seeing him being so um just it was committed, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Just not not necessarily outward showing so much. Oh, I would see him in church and I see him responding to the Holy Ghost and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But it wasn't the public display right. as much as it was probably right. more private. Right. You you know, one of the things that I, I guess I didn't think so much about until recently, I was talking to an aunt on the other side of my family. And uh, so my dad's side of the family, we probably did, probably pff, my mother probably did as much church with my dad's side of the family as <laughs> <laughs> her side. I don't know, because she had a sister she was really close to, Aunt May, and they, they sang a lot. But anyway, my aunt, she was telling me the other day or a few months ago how she would, uh, in recent history, she would um, yell out and call for some kids to come in and have church. It's time to come in and have church. She said those kids would just look at her. Like, <laughs> like what is she talking about? But in our generation, mm -hmm. you know, whenever we heard, come in, it's time to have church, we, whatever we were doing, we stopped whatever <laughs> we were doing. <laughs> we went in and at church, we didn't know it was an option. Apparently, <laughs> we didn't know it was an option. But, but you know, I think that's, that was great to inherit that. Uh, sometimes there's spiritual gifts that people inherit, mm -hmm. and they they don't realize it's yeah. a gift. They, it's just second nature to be able to go to the gospel and to read uh, the gospel and to be able to put yourself in the gospel. That's that is mm -hmm. a gift. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and you know through my upbringing or whatever, and I don't think it's just through mine. I think some of us whenever we hear we, we hear my sister. We didn't go reading on Wednesday night. Some of us just want to put our Bibles down, want to stop and just listen. <laughs> you know. But anyway, let's go to the next question. Okay. Why does God communicate differently at different times, whether through prophets, angels, or his son? Uh, I think if you when you go back and, and look at this, if you study the vehicles that God used to communicate. They were always appropriate for that season. Exactly. And so uh, it's it's like uh, the if you think about the Azusa revival, mm -hmm. the great movement of the of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at society and what was going on in society, that 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 movement needed to be done in a way that it wasn't personality driven mm -hmm. by an individual person, mm -hmm. because otherwise they could take credit for it and things. Mm -hmm. But God always knows the vehicle based on the people in the environment mm -hmm. and the, the method that's necessary to be of greatest impact to the kingdom of God, not necessarily to people right. as individual leaders, but to the kingdom as a whole. Right. So you have a single message. Mm -hmm. This is the Bible. You have a single message. Um, you have multiple Characters, over 400 people, really, mm -hmm. who contribute to the Bible. Is it 400? 40. 40 authors. 40 authors. 40 authors, 40 authors mm -hmm. not 400. But you, you really have, you really do. Well, but we're mm -hmm. not getting yeah. into that. But anyway, you have 40 authors that contribute to the Bible. So what you have is uh, you have the Jews who are telling their story. Mm -hmm. And the Jews who... Let's think about this. Whenever the Old Testament was written, the uh, ancient Near East is very relevant. Uh, Egyptians' writings, all these things are very relevant. And they're telling their stories in an uh, environment that is centered around other cultures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Centered around other cultures. So they're given their story. It's just like me here in the United States if I write a story as a black, the environment that I'm in is different than uh, maybe someone who is in, just say, Kenya mm -hmm. or somewhere. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they're looking at, um, uh, through the lens of the environment, what's relevant at the time. And then for them as a nation, they had the prophets. The reason the prophets are so relevant 
is that they had a dark period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have people saying we're going to have the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming. Then you hear nothing. 400 years. 400 years. I got that 400 right. 400 <laughs> years, a dark period. And then you have, during this dark period, you have people um, who begin to dream, uh, who begin to depend on dreams, mm -hmm. uh, astrology. Mm -hmm. So uh, whenever you start talking about the stars and, and that sort of thing, uh, why that was important whenever they saw the star, yeah. they begin to depend on um, what they felt like were the angels and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you have, now the angels in home have become important. But this was all about the Son of God. Mm -hmm. This was all about the Son of God. So the Word came, It was the Word was still being communicated, but just different ways mm -hmm. uh, where people were receptive of it at the time. People needed to hear. Whenever the prophetic Word was going forth, people were being warned that this is going to happen. You're going to endure certain things, but don't be overcome by them things. Those things don't be overwhelmed by mm -hmm. it because you have a Messiah coming. That's right. And it was very comforting, especially while they were in um, exile. Mm -hmm. It was very comforting to know I won't be here always. Yeah. Well, you know, as you were saying, it just it just serves as such a critical point uh, to be reminded um, that uh, when we study this. When you study scripture, to try to get insight into the environment, because the message is relevant before, during, and after, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's it's for this specific season. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, when you don't understand uh, if people are in captivity, that makes a difference how you get what message you get if you're in captivity or exile versus mm -hmm. if you having. Uh, Gloria times in, in Israel and in in under, right. under leadership. Can you imagine, just say for like um, Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. So when Jeremiah is saying that all of this is going to happen, and look, whenever you go into captivity, you might as well build houses and that's you're going to be there a while. You're going to be there a while. <laughs> Can you imagine what that was like when they were trying to get him to be quiet while he was prophesying mm -hmm. versus later, 35 years later, yep. 35 years later, you know, then have those words of encouragement, we're coming out of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Yet we're coming out of this. Yep. Okay, well, I hope that those uh, answers help someone. Okay. Help someone. Um, I didn't bring anything to show you. I could go back here to my library, but that would that would eat up a little more of your time. So next week I'll bring you something. All right. How about okay. that? Well, we thank you for joining us uh, this week. We ask that uh, you do like us if you enjoy it. We ask yes. you to share the video with your family and friends and maybe some people, not your friends. Um, <laughs> and uh, we, just, we just ask you to so, just... So be, this is literally not just like us. Hit the like, hit the like button down there. Hit yeah. that little thumbs up button. Like us. And then there's also a little uh, icon down there for share. Looks like an arrow going out somewhere. Yeah. And if you got some critique, you don't like my outfit, you know, send me some feedback. I got some fans out there. They'll give me some That's feedback. That's right. His fan, I'll, his I'll, fan I will make adjustments uh, accordingly. No, so. he's, he's, you, you, look, you look good, honey. Yeah. They're actually, well, I won't go into what they said. I'll just leave it out. But I took your criticism <laughs> seriously. So thank you again for joining us. <laughs> and may the, uh, may the favor and the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Uh, and until we meet again, be blessed of the Lord.